The following program is paid for by EG Tax. All opinions or statements expressed on this program are solely those of EG Tax or its guests and do not reflect the opinions of News Radio 930 WBEN or Odyssey. The following is paid programming. It's time to talk taxes. New friends, new opportunities, new partners. EG Tax. It's Ask the Tax Lady with Esther Gullius and EG Tax on News Radio 930 WBEN. To reach Esther now, call 803-0930, toll free at 1-800-616-9236, and cell calls are free at star 930. And now, live from the WBEN studios, it's Esther Goulias. Hey everybody, this is Esther Goulias, the tax lady, and we're here to uh, give you that mid-course correction here, because half the year is up, and we got half a year to go, and we... Uh, will hopefully give you some information that will help you to successfully complete the rest of your tax year. And and I will tell you, um, uh, when we are looking at July, and by the way, happy 4th of July weekend, I might add, uh, We one of the things that we're preparing for is college. And so our special guest in studio this year, uh, I mean this week, is a fine is a college planning specialist. So if you got questions about how to send your kid to college using the best breaks, this is the show you want to listen to. In the second half of our show, we're going to talk about all the tax breaks affiliated with college. So this should be quite a learning experience. And I have, of course, Christopher Fabian uh, joining me here in studio. Hey, Chris. Hello, Esther. Hello, Christopher. Um, did you guys have a good fourth? We did. We had a good time. You know, nice weather, great fireworks, great family time. So yeah, it was a great, great day. Yeah, that's wonderful. Okay, and who do we have? Uh, and we're, we're so blessed to have our special guest. I'm going to tell you, if you have kids getting ready for college, if you have kids in college, if you have little kids uh, and you think it's not really important about their college, this is the show you want to listen to. Chris, why don't you introduce our guest? Sure. So from the Financial Guys office, we have Michael Shaver. Um, he is a wealth advisor and, like you said, a college uh, planner. Um, so he can help answer any questions, uh, financial aid, when to start saving, um, should I do a 529, all those things people have questions on. We got your person here to ask answer those questions. And let's face it, sometimes it's like being in the middle of the forest and you can't see the forest for the trees. I mean, it, you, you don't know exactly what to do and you think, maybe my kid can't afford to go to college mm -hmm. or... You know, uh, what kind of financial aid can I get? And so, Mike, we want to thank you coming out on a 4th of July uh, weekend. We appreciate that. So, so Mike, um, what, when should somebody start looking at planning for college? Well, thanks, Esther and Chris, for having me. Um, I look at it as two parts. Part one is obvi obviously saving for college. So obviously that would be when the child is born, right? That's a whole decade's worth of saving for the education. The second part is more about saving on a college education. And that would really probably start when you're in eighth grade, definitely before you get to high school. So what do you, what do you mean? Uh, the first part I get, you know, sure. uh, st but what do you mean uh, 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 in eighth grade? What happens at eighth, gr at eighth grade? Sure. Like I said, most parents think college planning is the 529 plan or saving up right. to prepare their child to help pay for it. I focus more on the college education, getting the best education at the best price. Right. So, so for example... A child goes into high school, AP courses. If the child is taking AP courses, they can do it throughout their whole high school career. They could possibly go to their first semester of, of college having those credits already paid for or already taken care of. So who is, and this is advanced placement, right? That's what the yep. AP stands for? Correct. Who is it that... 
I mean, do you say to your kid, Johnny, I, uh, this year we want to make sure you do <laughs> advanced placement uh, pr uh, classes. I mean, who calls this out? I mean, who's the person that would uh, engineer it, so to speak? Exactly. So as a certified college advisor, that's what I'm educating the parents and the students about. So obviously the, the student has to be engaged. And that obviously that engagement's gonna come from the parents and from me helping the parents out, sort of quarterbacking, saying there are things you can do in your freshman year, sophomore year, junior year, to help prepare for the college and not pay, you know, as much as you have to pay. That's great. Right. But who I think Esther was asking do the parents go to the school and say, I want my kids to take these AP classes? Is it up to the students or is it up to the school itself, the high school? No, it's definitely up to the student with the parent encouraging them to take these classes. Now, obviously, the universities are really looking for the science, math, right? Not necessarily if there happens to be an AP history class, possibly that would not be what the university's looking for, but it's definitely the student, Chris. It would be the student and the parents saying, hey, we're engaged at an early age to be able to get to our senior year, child graduates, we're preparing for college, and we want to be able to make that education as least expensive as possible. Well, that, that sounds like a winner to me. I'm Esther Golias, the tax lady from EG Tax. If you want to talk to Mike, and you want to give us a call in the studio, 803-0930, 803-0930, star 930 in a cell phone. You can text us at 716-803-0930. And I'm going to tell you, uh, it really can be such a conundrum. You don't know exactly what to do. I have to tell you, I never do. I could say to my kids, okay, you're, Johnny, you're going to take some advanced placement exams, I mean classes. I thought it was kind of like what the guidance counselor mm -hmm. said, and that's it. That's right. So it's definitely um, all about education. Obviously, we're talking about the child's education, but it's also educating the parents and the student of what to expect. Now, my two boys, they graduated. Most parents um, know when they have a senior in high school in the fall, they go to their high school because they have a college sort of planning night. And even that could be overwhelming. You sit there for a couple hours, the parents are all like, well, what's going on? You do walk away with some good information, but that is not enough just to attend a high school, you know, a one-night thing. A one-night thing. It should be something that is, you know, you work towards through all of high school, and that's what I'm here to help um, parents and students with. So, so let's. Uh, uh, so, if your kid is being very teenagerish, <laughs> if you know what I mean, and right now they're having a good time being a teenager. They've got their driver's license, and maybe they don't have their head in the in the plan, so to speak, is that something you would help the parents with? Like say, maybe juniors should not go to college for a year or? Well, I also love when my, my um, the parents that I help bring the students in on the appointments and we get to be able to talk together. So you're so right, Esther. It's um, those kids when they're freshmen, sophomore, juniors are not really thinking yet about college, right. but they should be because somebody is going to pay. Right, so if it's gonna be the parents gonna take on the whole responsibility, maybe the student has to take on the whole responsibility, or if it's part and part. If that's the case, somebody's paying, the student and the parent, at the very least, should want to pay for that education at the lowest cost. Right, <laughs> so how important is it to go to a Ivy League school or uh, you know, some of these other schools that are thirty, forty thousand dollars $40,000 a year, does that really, is that important in your first couple years of college or should you, should you go right to these very expensive schools and, you well, know? I, yeah, I, I don't know about the Ivy League. Obviously, if you're capable of getting into one of those, you clearly would want four years of that um, education for for the future but I think what you're referring to is one way to save money is by going to a community school 
right? You go to for two years, you go to ECC, you know, the transferable credits onto a, say, UB. So that is an excellent way to save money on an education. Well, you're my kind of guy. That's that's what I, I can remember when my kids were were uh, teenagers, and we're we're talking about college, and they were naming Wharton. They want to go to Wharton. Okay, you want to go to Wharton? Okay, well, I'll pay for UB. <laughs> How's that? But you know, and it's interesting because they uh, my kids graduated from University of Buffalo, and they have they've got wonderful careers and that we were able to do it without any student debt, you know? And so, but, but you get a lot of pushback from the kid. That's why you want to start it early as possible. All right. I'm Esther Golius, the tax lady from EG Tax, 803-0930, 803-0930, star 930 on a cell phone. You can text us at 716-803-0930. We have our special college planning specialist, Mike Shaver, here in studio. You got kids. You got questions. Give us a call. We're going to take a short break. We'll be back on the other side. Hey, to us, you are family, and one of our uh, great things that we're doing today is we're talking to Mike Shaver. He's a college planning specialist with the Financial Guys. If you need Mike, and that's what his meat and potatoes are, and he's going to save you meat and potatoes as well, he's at 633-1333. That's the Financial Guys, Mike Shaver, college planning specialist. But you are so lucky today, you can talk to Mike yourself as you look at this daunting task of maybe hundreds of thousands of dollars because your kid is ready for college or maybe your kid is in grade school, should you really do anything? So Mike, we're so glad you're here. Uh, Chris, you said you had a question. Yes, I actually got a text on my phone from one of my clients. They wanted to know, is a New York 529 always the best or are there other 529s that are better? That's an excellent question. Up until this past year, 529s are obviously very important, but they did have some disadvantages when it came time to complete the FAFSA because it was a parent asset. So now they have, and that would be any owner of a 529 for the child. Now they just made some changes to FAFSA, and the new rule is a non-parent-owned 529 plan will not be counted as an asset when they go and do the FAFSA. So I always encourage now, anyone that's opened up a 529 plan to help save for their child's education, to have it in the grandparents' name. Not the parents, hmm. the grandparents' name. So any, it could be a sibling of the parent, right? You could always yep. name a successor owner, right? For a grandparent, you could name somebody else too. But the point is, not to have the parent own it, that way, it's not counted against them when they go do the financial aid. All right. And, and will you explain that, Mike? What What is a FAFSA form? I mean, and who has to do it? And if, you're, if your kid uh, doesn't need financial aid, do you still have to fill out the FAFSA? You don't, but some universities, I should say most universities, do require it. That's an excellent question, Esther, because a lot of parents say, you know what, I'm not going to do the FAFSA because I, I made too much money. That is college planning 101 mistake right there. Every child and parent should do the FAFSA, which is the free application for federal student aid. It's free, right? And they should do it every year. They do it, you know, when they're senior year of, of high school, and you do it freshman, sophomore, junior year of college. You do it every single year. You should complete the FAFSA. No. Okay, but so, so why? I mean, if I'm not going to get financial aid. That's an excellent question. Yes, the reason why is this. The university that the child wants to go to, or you know, a lot of times they want to apply to multiple universities, that is the one main thing, not the only thing, but the main thing the university uses to determine the child's cost of attendance is what the FAFSA number is. So what we're talking about is the student aid index. Student aid index it used to be called the expected family contribution. They just changed it to the student aid index, the SAI. The university uses that, Esther, to help determine what they're going to charge that student to attend that university. So, so it's like what the traffic will bear? Correct. Absolutely. <laughs> so like, say, St. Bonaventures, just picking on them right mm -hmm. now, we'll say that's 30000 a year. 
but the parents don't make enough for the financial aid to get true financial aid. Correct. The school can say, look it, we see where you are at. Instead of 30, we're only going to charge you 20. Right. So there are some financial um, things that we can help parents with to help change that expected family contribution, the student aid index now, to help make that number lower. So do you actually do the FAFSA forms then for the parents? Yep, absolutely. Okay, and so again, Mike, people can get you at the financial guys at 633-1333, Actually, right? no, it's, it would be um, the 633-1515. All right, 633-1515. Yep. Okay, that's cool. No. Well, I will tell you, that, and I would think parents need to do this, right? Absolutely. I mean, again, somebody's going to be paying for that education. Now, granted, if a, if a student has a full ride, God bless them, but if you know, most of the time either the parent and or the student has to help pay for this education, they should want to get the best education at the best price. Chris, you had a question. Right, right. Two things. Um, first is, I, at least when my daughters were going to school, they had to do the FAFSA forms to get the student loans. Correct. That's part of the student loan application sure. is through the FAFSA process. Yeah. So if there's any money needed, you have to do the FAFSA anyways. Sure, yeah. So that most likely would be unsubsidized loan by the federal government, and you have to complete the FAFSA in order to obtain that. But that's what, another thing why I encourage every parent to do it is because the, the loans that are offered by the federal government are typically a little less interest rate than if you went what we call private student loans if you had to go outside. All right. And then have you ever seen um, where maybe a kid had a f- free w- ride, like you said, we'll say to University of Tennessee? Well, that's great. You got that free ride. But is it really free? Because room and board that's right. and everything. Else. That and could, the meal plan and room and board. and sure. Right. Where that would be more expensive than going to UB. Yep. It all comes down to, again, coaching about... Um, what the students desire is, I know it's hard when they're young, but you definitely don't want to be paying a lot of money for a college education in a big school where you walk out with, after four or five years now, it takes to graduate, with over $100,000 of debt mm-hmm. when they ended up with just a maybe a, a bachelor's in a business degree. Right. Have you ever drawn numbers, put down the numbers, like say, here's your school A, here's your school B, here's school C, and show them the parents and the student how much debt, because then you could figure out how much debt they would be. Absolutely, yeah. It's called the college funding report. So, you know, the student usually says to the parents, oh, we're thinking about my student wants to go, or my child wants to go to three or four different schools. You can plug it into the computer program that we have and print out a college funding report. Okay. And does that, I mean, I could see parents going, oh, crap, you're not going <laughs> to this one. <laughs> <laughs> Very well. And again, that's by having those conversations and not just waiting until you're a senior in high school, right? Yeah. Having the conversations a little bit when you're a freshman. Take the AP classes. A little more conversation in sophomore. A little more conversation when you're a junior. Okay, I'm Esther Gullius, the tax lady from EG Tax. Our phone, our phone number here in studio is 8030930. I know you're in the backyard drinking a mint julep right now. <laughs> Star 930 on a cell phone. We have Mike Shaver here, a college planning specialist, uh, 633-1515. And if you have any texts, you want to text us, 716-8030930. The Excelsior uh, Scholarship. Yes. Is that something that you are intricately involved in as well? Absolutely. I've helped um, parents with that also. That is um, something you go through the FAFSA first, and then you do the tuition assistance program. That's New York State TAP. And then we go from the TAP, that website for New York State takes you into the accessory program. So do you work directly then with a a particular college for in you know if for this student or do you strictly talk to the parents and then it's up to the student and parents to to deal directly with the college yeah that's a great question I mean just like what Esther what you and, and Chris and what EG tax does is you educate your you know clients on how to you know pay the least amount of tax right, right? so you do a lot of educating that's all I'm really doing it's just educating the parent through 
you know, we have some computer software programs and so forth, but we're just educating the parent and the student on what to expect next. What's the following thing? What's How can I save you know, money on this college? How can I save money on that college? We're just educating them so they don't walk out with the most, you know, walk out with the least amount of debt is the objective. Right. And do you have something, I'm sure you probably, you give to them too, like a list of websites to go for scholarships. Scholarships, correct, absolutely. Because I remember there's like thousands and thousands that don't get used because Mm -hmm. nobody knows about them, right? Absolutely, yeah. So I, I hold, you know, college planning seminars at the Financial Guys, and they can just go to the, our website, uh, thefinancialguys.com, look up at the events tab, and just keep on checking to see when the next college planning event's going to occur. And in that, when the parents attend, they walk out with valuable information that will help them step by step know what to do next. And if some, and I don't want to put you on the spot, sorry. <laughs> if somebody, what is the cost for a parent to come see you? So obviously, they want to call the financial guys. You know, eight three three fin guys. Um, ask for Mike Shaver. I'm gonna. It's obviously a complimentary consultation, right? We're gonna sit down and, and see if it's the right fit for them, for the student, and if they want to do more working with me, I do have several packages, different price levels to help parents with. Well, that's great. I will tell you, as somebody that has put a bunch of kids and grandkids through college, it's a lot of it has to do with being realistic. And it sounds like you are somebody that is absolutely realistic, where sometimes you say, say maybe you don't want to spend 150000 in college. Maybe you want to do something that would be more reasonable and, and look at those alternatives, because that really makes sense. Because this college debt is like a dead body. It just you just Bring it in year after year after year after year till you can pay it. So anyway, I'm Esther Gullius, the tax lady from EG Tax. We were joined in studio today with Mike Shaver from the Financial Guys. He's a college planning specialist, and uh, you can get him at the Financial Guys. And his phone number is 633-1515. And Mike, I can't tell you how much we appreciate you being here. Well, thank you so much for having me. Appreciate it. All right. Uh, we're going to take a short break for the news. We'll be back on the other side. Hey, to us, you are family, and I, I mean, is, there's, any, there's nothing more glorious than summer in western New York. Do you think, Chris? Oh, Chris is not Sorry, there. haven't had phone issues. <laughs> okay, but I mean, it is, uh, it, it is a glorious time of year, and I know that 4th of July, this is a long weekend. I hope everybody's having a, gr- a great time. You can call us at 8030930, 8030930, star 930 in a cell phone. You can text us at 716-8030930. And um, we had our special guest, Mike Shaver, uh, college planning specialist. If you need, if you, will you probably, everybody that's listening, have got kids, grandkids, getting ready for school uh, at any stage, unless they're already out of uh, college, uh, you might want to give Mike a call. He's absolutely, he knows what he's talking about. I love that he was so realistic about sometimes you don't want to start up start off at that really expensive school right right i know i mean my my niece was just here from out of town and you know it it comes down to the smartness of the child both street smart and book smart she was her salus salus what is the second smartest person in the class obviously you can tell that wasn't me Um, so lord there you go um and she got a great scholarship offer at this school and she actually turned it down because she goes you know they did have the program i wanted but if i changed my mind on what where what career i wanted I wouldn't have been able to really go into a different field because they didn't have that wide variety. So she's going to a different school that still has her medical program she wanted, but then it offers so much more in case she does flexibility. Change. Flexibility. Right? Yep. yep. And well, I can I can remember when Grace she was uh, at uh, Stony Brook. Yep. And she said, you know what? I'm I'm coming back to UB because I don't want to pay for the the housing. You yep. know. I mean, and she lived at home, and you got to really give her kudos for that. So many times, um, uh, kids are 
looking for that college experience and all that experience costs money right and i know right. nowadays parents it seems like i'm not I don't put my foot in my mouth but it seems like parents are afraid of their teenagers and telling them no you can't you do think? something <laughs> I, I, t I mean i at the time when your wife was going to college <laughs> i mean there was not we didn't have the money. Yeah, you know? wasn't it Brooke Shields College? If she wanted to go where Brooke Shields went. And I said, <laughs> great. Okay, if you can find some sugar daddy to pay, knock yourself out. But if I'm paying, you're going to UB. And <laughs> and, and she look at she's the and, and she's the doctor now. You know? Yep. Yep. All right, I'm Esther Golius, the tax lady from AG Tax, 8030930, 8030930, star 930 on our cell phone. You can text us at 716-8030930. Before we get into some of the tax benefits of higher education that we want to make sure that you guys know about, uh, we have a tax, right? We do. Uh, am I subject to registering with the Financial Prime Enforcement Network if my business is a sole proprietorship slash DBA? As long as it's not a limited liability company, no, you don't have to. Right, right. Because as long as you don't register with the Department of State, that's not New York State sales tax, this is an Department of State, um, then you do not have to do the the uh, BOI. Right. So it would be limited liability companies, partnerships, and 1120Ss. Those would, those would be the people. And actually, there's uh, an exemption. Banks don't have to register. Uh, uh, brokerages don't have to register. Either. There's exceptions. Churches don't have to register. But if you have a pre-2024 business that is the subchapter S, a li uh, limited liability company or partnership, then you have till the end of this year, and then you'd be looking at that uh, potential $10,000 penalty. And if you just did it this year, you only have 90 days, and the clock starts ticking. And we, we have a sale. We're helping lots and lots of people register. And so if you want to go to our website at egtax.com, we can help you with that. Exactly. Yes. Right? Yep. All right. Um, wanted to talk about this. I, I know we had some calls, 8030930, 8030930, star 930 and a cell phone. The thing is when you have kids that are going, or you, that are going into the first four years of continuing education, there are tax credits in addition to uh, the benefits that we that we were talking about with Mike uh, Shaver before, uh, there are tax benefits, and the first benefit is is the American Opportunity Tax Credit. And Chris, explain how that all works. Sure. So the AOTC, um, that is the credit for, like you said, the first four years, uh, and it, it's up to twenty five hundred dollars. Fifteen. And it's, is that a deduction, Chris? It's not a deduction. It's a tax credit. The first which is fifth, really good, right? Yes. yes. The first fifteen hundred reduces your tax liability. The second thousand, it could be a refundable credit, which means it increases your refund even though you zeroed out your tax liability. Right. So it's very important you do that one right, so you can get maximized that $2,500. And then kind of piggybacking on what you were saying a little while ago about parents being afraid of their kids. <laughs> this happens all the time with the AOTC, doesn't it? Because the kids go, I've been at the student union and I can get some money back and I don't want you to claim the, the education credit on your tax return. And what does that really do to the parent many times? Oh my gosh. The parents who refuses to claim their children because, oh, no, the children know everything, just lost on the federal return up to $3,000. And on New York State, it could be anywhere from two sixty up to $1,000 as well because right. of their so, New York State's education credit. So Now, what's the most the kid can save? Um, probably. Yeah, I mean, they're going to do it incorrectly but incorrectly gonna, uh, like a thousand right yeah f up to 15 hunt the non-refundable section right. of the credit right. right yep and if they don't have much money it doesn't make any difference at all so here you got the kid that is 
bullying the parents, and, and I have been bullied as well with my kids, who's bullying the parents because they, they want to claim it, and the parents then acquiesce and don't claim the credit, and so the family misses out on like four, three or $4,000. Right. right, right. Now, if that was you, if you were a bullied parent, we have good news for you. Right, you can go back and amend the kid's return and amend your return. And, and get the money. Yep. With interest. Yes. And this is especially important. Let's say you're a single taxpayer and you have a college age kid, maybe 21 years old, who basically said, I want to claim it myself. Okay, so what happens to you if this is your only child, because you're not claiming the child anymore, you're losing the head of the household status, right? Right. And if you are moderate income, you're losing the earned income credit. Right. And you're losing the education credit. Yeah. Yeah. So, so not only would you save the the three or four thousand dollars that we're talking about, you'd also get the earned you're losing the earned income credit and you're paying taxes. So this might be a five or six thousand dollar savings for you. So if you're somebody that had a kid under the age of 24, you're single and, you, and, and they claim themselves on their uh, tax return, I think you should really come to see us because we could get you a lot of money back. Definitely. Yep. Right? Yep. Okay, we have Steve that's been holding, right? Yes. Hey, Steve, how can we help you? Steve? Hello, uh, yep. hello Steve. Hi. Hi. Hey, two questions. One, you know to itemize you know it's for my dad i'm his son and you know when you get the bills and it says yo co-pay a hundred dollars for an er visit or uh doctor's uh, co-pays do you do i save that part or do i save the part when i use his credit card or pay the bill and they send me a receipt because i'm telling them i want paper receipts for itemize which which copy do i keep to itemize right. well first of all is your dad able to itemize well yeah, that was my second question. At what income level do you think it's perceivable? Well, I to... mean, is he is he a single uh, yeah, taxpayer? Yeah, yeah. yeah, he's 93. He's in assisted living right does now. He, does him. he have to file? Does he have income? Yeah. Oh, yeah, you guys do it every year. Actually, I have to go in and see you guys to do his taxes for this, this last year. Um, okay, well, if there's like... It, there's this, the standard deduction, which in his situation is almost $14,000. That's so his itemized deductions would have to exceed that figure in order to save any money. But mm -hmm. when you take a look at medical, it has to exceed seven and a half percent of his adjusted gross income. So if his adjusted gross income is a hundred thousand, they're going to reduce the oh, no, medical only, by seventy five hundred dollars. He, he, he only gets like three thousand a month for pension. So right, but you said he's in assisted living, right? Right. Yeah. Could he live on right. his own? Could he dress himself? Could he bathe himself? Could he no. take his medicine? No. So then no. the assisted living cost would, would be... Right. The, the, that would be a medical deduction then. So it so. sounds like he'd be able to make the medical. And so really it's whatever you pay is going to add to what he's um, being billed at the, at the assisted living uh, right. center. So if you're paying with credit card or a check, it's all going to be deductible. I would say save both. <laughs> right. Save both? Yes. Okay. Right. Okay, and then I'll make an appointment to come see a Chris to have his taxes done for this uh, 2023. Perfect. Okay. Okay, Perfect. thank you. Thank you. Look forward to helping Good you. Good son. Okay. I'm Mr. Golius, the tax lady from EG Tax, 8030930, 8030930, star 930 in a cell phone. You can text us at 716-8030, and we have a text, right? We do. I understand you help people answer that new directive. Do you offer any help in closing down a New York State LLC before this goes into effect? <laughs> <laughs> Well, well, I mean, it's in effect already. Yeah, it is. It went in effect January the 1st. Right, right. So as long as the business is still in operations, you still would have to do the BOI reporting. And we do do help with closing down an LLC. We help you get the right paperwork in to New York State and all the correct filing. So, yes, we can help you. Right. All right, I'm Esther Gullius, the tax lady, 8030930. 8030930 star 93 in a cell phone text us 7168030930 so the we were talking about the AOTC on the state of New York 
there's also another credit for for going to college, right? First four years of of uh, continuing education. Right, right. The undergraduate degree for New York State. Um, it's it's a, could be a two hundred dollars to four hundred dollars, and if you're able to itemize on New York State, it could even help you even, even more. more than that four hundred dollars. But right, this, a lot of people don't know you can either take the credit, or for for the education, higher education, or take it as an itemized deduction, and you really have to try it both ways. Correct. Yep. And then you take whichever is better. Yes. Yep. All so. right. And then the other, there's now over and above the AOTC, there's also, oh, okay, I know what I wanted to talk to you about. Let's say that grandma and grandpa are paying for the kid's education. Okay. And so the you don't think you can take the American Opportunity Tax Credit because you're not paying for it. Is that a correct thing under tax law? No, it goes with the dependent. Whoever claims the dependent gets the education credit. Right. And a lot of people, okay, so what if I borrowed all the money? Same thing. Right, absolutely. All right, I'm Esther Goldius, the tax lady from EG Tax. We're going to take a short break. We'll be back on the other side with your tax and questions and calls. Hey, to us, you are family, and um, I hope you're having a wonderful long 4th of July weekend. You just can't beat the weather, right? Oh, unbelievable, unbelievable weather. I'll tell you, you know, (laughs) I was talking to Tiff the other day. She said, this is a great year for a swimming pool. Right, <laughs> it I mean, is because there Last can be many wasn't. years when when swimming pools don't work. Yeah, all yep. right. But you know, um, I want I want to go back yes, to sir. right before break. Yes, we were talking about who pays it and if you get who gets it. Right, this is the only credit that really, yeah, they don't care who pays. Yep. Because uh, you think medical, you have to pay it. Your property taxes, it has to be your bill, and you have to pay it. Everything, your charity has to be you. The schooling is the only thing out there where you don't have to pay it, but you still get the credit. Right. Absolutely. You know, all right, and then let's talk about 529 money. Everybody banters around 529. Chris, explain what 529 deductions are how it benefits and it's really not it's not that big of a it's not that big of a deduction when you really take a look at where the deduction lies it's it's really if you think about it it's a if a ira and a roth ira had a baby (laughs) because right right because on the federal a 529 plan isn't deductible Right. Right. And Only the growth. the appreciation. Oh, and the appreciation is tax free if it's right. used for education. education. Right. The benefit now, where you would look at a traditional IRA considering, would be on New York State, if you're single and you put into a New York 529, you get a $5,000 uh, deduction. deduction from income. And if you're in the 5% tax bracket, that means all you save is two hundred and fifty dollars right. because it's only on New York State. Right, and New okay. and for joint, it's up to a ten thousand dollar deduction. Right, so it saves you a little bit more, but it is a great tool. Like as long as that money is used for education, it can grow tax free, and you can still convert it. Say because you have to age thirty, you can conv- change it from little Timmy. And to little Jane, if Timmy didn't go to college. I mean, the other child. The other child. Another beneficiary. Yep. Yep. And you can even roll it over now a certain amount into a Roth IRA. So for that child. So there's lots of different nooks and crannies in there that are beneficial, but you got to really look to see, you know, that it's the best course for you. And I have to say, you know, I have grandchildren and. One of the best things that you can do is, you know, you can only give them so much in electronics. If you give them money and you put it into their 529 plan, they can use it for education. And that's a really good thing. Exactly. Yes. Right? Yeah. Okay. We got Kevin on the phone. Our, hey, Kev. Our favorite Kevin. Hey, how are you doing, folks? How are you, sir? I have a follow-up question. Fine, thank you. I hope we had a good 
I um, have a follow-up question. I was asking you guys about 4-1 teams last week. You did mention if you're 59 and a half, you don't pay a penalty, you know, if you break it or you touch any part of it. But um, you still pay a tax, though, for doing it, right? Is that like a... If it's a traditional IRA and you're taking the money out, then any money you take out, you're, if you're over the age of 59 and a half, you're going to be able to have no penalty, but it's still going to be fully taxable, federal, and um, uh, anything it, over $20,000 in New York State. Oh, right, right. Now, if you do like less than 20000 do you... Then do it's tax-free in New York State, and it's fully taxable federal. Uh, federal, all right, okay. And one more thing. Could you explain the debt tax, how that works, and who pays that? Well, you know, I have to tell you, it's it's really a, a political football. The death tax is the estate tax. And the truth is, 99% of the people listening to this broadcast will never, ever pay estate taxes because their estate is not over, um, it's almost $15 million right now. So if your estate is over $15 million, then you pay really about 50% of everything over $15 million, uh, wow. in estate taxes. But since most people don't have an estate of over $15 million, nobody's going to pay the estate tax. Oh, oh I've got to wait then, being $14 million, $9.99. Oh, I know. I, and I, of all people <laughs> I know, Kevin, I'm thinking Kevin probably <laughs> is going to be the 1% guy. Speaking of which, did your island do okay during the... Hurricane? Oh yeah, they, they 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 missed the bullet, man. It just went north. It was that you know. And so everything's uh, the, okay. Those storms don't really head that south, you know, normally, and but they, they missed it, you know. So that's good to good. know. Good. Because they have a saying down there that God is a trini, a Trinidadian. <laughs> that's what they're saying right. now. Anyway, thank you again, folks. All you right, have Kevin. A great day. All right, thank you later. Kevin. And then we got Bruce. Yep. Hey, Bruce, how can we help you? Yes, hi. Um, I, my house is in an irrevocable trust with my children as the trustees. At the point that they go to sell it, um, I've kept track. I have about $130,000 worth of improvements I've done to the house. Can they deduct those against the capital gains tax that would be due? Well, the law just was changed last year. So in an irrevocable trust, the asset uh, does not get a stepped up basis. Now I would, I, I we've had attorneys that call and say there's a workaround. You might want to talk to your attorney about it. But yes, so since you don't get the stepped up basis, you'd go back to the original cost plus improvements uh, plus expensive sale from what they sell it for would be the capital gain. So the improvements um, cannot be deducted against. The All right, so let's just say that you paid a hundred thousand for the house, and you okay. did improvements of fifty. So that means, Correct. and your expensive sale is twenty. So that means your adjusted basis then is a hundred and seventy. So if they sell it for two hundred thousand, there's a three thirty thousand dollar gain. Can you just walk through that one more time, please? <laughs> sure. Hundred thousand dollar original cost, fifty thousand right. in improvements. Right. 20000 in expensive sale. So that okay. brings the adjusted basis to 170 If you sell it for right. 200000 there's a $30,000 gain. I see. So actually, the improvements actually work in a negative direction. No, no not at no, all. It's they a work positive. in a positive direction. They bring up the cost of the home. Oh, I see. Okay. All right. So it's... It's the difference then between the cost of the home improvements and the selling price. Yes. C correct. Now, Got it. but that's because you have it in an irrevocable trust. Had right. you just did a life estate, they would have gotten a stepped up basis of the fair market value on the date of your death, which meant they would have paid zero taxes. Correct. Right. So, but you, okay. uh, uh, but unless, you know, again, you want to talk to your attorney about this, maybe they can take that house out of the trust and put a life estate on it, and then your kids wouldn't pay any taxes at all. I see. Okay. But the life estate would be, would it be uh, considered an asset for the purpose if Medicaid was needed for nursing? After home? five no. years, After no. After five years, right. 
Chris is right. All right, so it's the same five years. Yep. Right. Very good. Thank you for that. I appreciate it. All right. Thank you, Bruce. I'm Esther Gullius, the tax lady from EG Tax, 8030930, 8030930. We only got like four minutes left. Right, and I know, we, sorry, oh, go on. I just, go on. with Bruce, we do have Dennis Kitchen coming on the show at the end of the month. He's going to talk some legal stuff. We do have Jeff Katz coming on in the beginning of August to talk about estates and trusts. Right. So you got to stay, stay, stay in tune, Bruce, and we'll, we'll have you covered. Yeah, because that's what we kind of do this time of year. Uh, we talk about the tax aspects of different things, but we try to have special guests on and, uh, and specialists who can more deeply talk about these things. Like for instance, with the irrevocable trust, you might want to talk to Dennis or Jeff about these and you know, no charge. You can't beat the price. Exactly. Exactly. Now, and our then, seminar. I was just going to say that. <laughs> our seminar is the first Saturday in October. Um, our budget beat the fight, the inflation, you know, Give us a call at our office to register, 632-7886, or go to our website at egtax.com. Yeah, I little... mean, like, for instance, sir, I'm sure there's people listening that are having, they're, they're not been very successful in their budget, and they're thinking, how can I improve my credit score? We want to talk about that. Maybe you ought to think about um, a bankruptcy. I know a Dennis Kitchen uh, talks about a fresh start. Sometimes that's the only way you can get out from under. I know my, my own sister had uh, terminal cancer and had run up a gigantic medical bill that she could never, ever pay. And miraculously, she didn't die. I mean, it was a real miracle. But they still had a half a million dollars in in medical that they couldn't they couldn't uh, get rid of, and so she was somebody I said, and her husband was adamant he did not want to file a bankruptcy for like twenty years. They carried around that debt. They couldn't get any house. They couldn't get anybody to loan them anything. So I finally convinced them that they they were never going to. They could, you can always sign resign back onto that debt, but they were never going to get out from under, and so they had to do a bankruptcy, and then for the rest of her life they were able to get a house and and uh, it was a, it was a miracle and so bankruptcy is a tool in your toolbox and that's uh, part of what we're going to talk about as, as well at that seminar so you can go to our website at egtax.com and register no charge we just love helping people and during the week if you get love letters um, you want to do your 2023 tax return hey we do them all the time right chris that's right where they don't pay just don't just pay those letters bring them in let us take a look at them so we can tell you yes no oh you don't owe five thousand you only owe two hundred dollars well that and that's really good news right and yeah. again if you need to register uh with the boi fincen eg tax is doing that we have a special uh price now for people that do it at the beginning of the year because it's gonna be a rush at the end of the year until next week i'm esther gullius the tax lady from eg tax with chris fabian thanks for listening happy fourth bye-bye The previous program was paid for by EG Tax.